Hey everybody, welcome back. Yes, the cheapo is in the house. And I'm not talking about me. No, we're looking at the Infrarider YF36K. Oh, well, let's be here real. we go. Infrarider is a horrible name. Horrible. I can't even say it two times fast, let alone three. Infrarider, 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 Infrarider. Inf you get the idea. Now, besides the horrible name, it does a lot of things for a cheapo for 20 bucks US, about 24, 25 Canadian. This little puppy is loaded. And look for that price you actually get a case a separate case oh thank you and in the case we've got yes a temperature thermocouple because this little guy does temperature in both celsius and fahrenheit we'll get to that in a second um you also get a pull out for your instructions and a basic pull out sheet but hey that's all you need right gives us the specs uh the basic how to and speaking of specs they're not the greatest in some of the ranges like for instance uh capacitance only goes up to four millifarad four thousand microfarad i uh, wish that was higher but 40 mega ohm uh 10 amps uh 400 milliamps i mean you know give and take it's not that bad and yes we do get those test leads uh pretty big test leads look at that wow We've seen this design deployed in a lot of different meters in the past. Uh, this one does it well. I really like the two-tone with the red. Um, it's a nice soft boot. Um, I don't know how much protection that'll be, but it's definitely better than plastic. And it's going to give it some protection, no doubt. On the back, we have our standard tilt stand. And you can definitely one-hand it uh, if you're on a better surface than I am right now. But um, all in all, not too shabby and did those test leads and i'm telling you holy moly these things are long they are long and a really good size gauge on there as well so um kudos um for rider for See? making some but uh, irregardless I i'm kind of impressed and you know this just about blew me away are you ready for this yes gold tip test leads gold tip test leads with this cheapo ultra sharp and man they are gold tipped absolutely insane this little thing keeps surprising me i thought i was just gonna be getting your standard test leads oh sorry cat three there we are but holy moly cannoli gold tipped long ah oh, beauty now if only these were were, were silicone yeah i'm thinking this is probably the first time we've ever come across gold tip needlepoint style test leads on a cheapo multimeter unbelievable whoa here we are at 10.0000 volts DC and coming up at 10.01. Beautiful. Next up, we're going to Zamboni right over to continuity because these test leads just impress me. Okay, already continuity. Here we go. Three, two, one. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, man, that is loud and that is fast and latched. Oh, beautiful. Pro Masters, another pair of gold tip test leads. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Amazing. I'm telling you, you rock, baby. Eighty nine point three decibels. The maximum output volume and continuity. Holy moly. That's one of the loudest we've had on the channel. Oh, it's a cheapo. Don't forget, it's a cheapo. Whoa. By the way, that selector switch is really nice as well. Good click, click, clackety clack. Gets to those ranges with authority. Yeah, that beep is loud, letting you know that you're in a different range, but very nice selector. And here we are. LED time. Let's start off with a standard diode. And survey says there's a forward voltage drop. Oh, yeah. Now, we don't have that nice audible beep. That's too bad. Oh, that's too bad. But anyway, that's okay. Moving on. The red LED. There we go. The yellow. Yes. Green. The blue. Oh, yeah. And the white. Yes. Five for five. Infrarider. Oh, we love you, man. Output voltage in dial mode. An amazing four volts. 3.96 to be exact. These needle nose tips are great when you're uh, 
diagnosing a uh, small PCB SMD, for instance, uh, you can get into the tightest of places uh, with these nittle points. So excellent, really handy. Precision resistor time, 100 ohm, coming in as 100.3. That works. Quick look at resistance with the Decade Box, sitting at one mega ohm, coming up as 0.99 of a mega ohm, awfully close, three mega ohm. Oh yeah, 3.002, let's try six mega ohm. Beauty, and finally 10 mega ohm. 9.97, 98, 99, 10, oh yes. Excellent, okay, so range speed, not too shabby. Um, let's try 7.3 mega ohm. 7.33, there you go. Test leads fit in there nice and snug, look at that. Oh yeah, it's not going anywhere. You can pull, you can yank, those suckers are in. Quick look at temperature now. I've got it uh, side by side with that little 902C and you can see we're looking at around 18 degrees, maybe-ish, 17.6, 17.5. So we have a discrepancy of about 1.5 degrees Celsius. Now, once again, this is dual uh, temperature. Hit that select button. There we are, 66 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, this is just the ambient onboard sensor. If I plug in a thermocouple, let's just see what happens. So with that thermocouple plugged in, 19 degrees still on the infrared, 17.9-ish now on the 902C. So, hey, all in all, about a one degree discrepancy. Not too bad. I have it plugged into the household mains, 120.4 volts. And this is actually true RMS. Yes, it doesn't say anywhere on the meter itself, but uh, in the documentation, it is stating that this is true RMS multimeter. So, and just uh, bringing in a second opinion, we've got a Sanwa PC7000, and look at that, 120.7. So, good job, InfraRider, true RMS, all in the cheapo package. Loving it. Checking out the frequency right now, and there we are with the infrarider and the Sanwa, both in agreement, 60 hertz. And as well, we can hit that select switch, and there is our duty cycle. Beauty. Give you an idea of the size of the infrarider. Uh, it's a small meter, standard size, a BT meter right here. And uh, your average size DMM, and on the far end, of course, we have our tiny little DT83. 830D, but uh, all in all, I'd say this is a pretty decent size, portable and uh, pocketable probably, and you can leave it on the bench as well. Doesn't take a lot, a lot of real estate. Hey, we've got a special uh, surprise guest today, all the way from Europe, uh, from Germany, whereabouts, uh, Dr. Meter Meister. Yeah, that's his real name. So uh, thanks for joining us, Dr. Meister. So glad you can make it to the oh, channel. thank you very much, yeah, because here in the beautiful Deutschland, it's a very interesting times for living in, you know. And uh, well, what can I say? I love multimeters and I think they love me, so it's all good. Totally agree. Hey, listen, what is your view, your, your heartfelt opinion on the world of smart multimeters? What do you think of that innovation per se? Well, you know, smart multimeters evolution, yeah? Evolution. So it's like evolutionary. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Now, don't take me wrong. It's not a good thing. It's not a bad thing. It's just one of those things, you know? Kind of like these flies around me. It's really interesting you say that, Doctor, because, you know, evolutionary and revolutionary, really almost the same thing, don't you think? So do you think this is going to be the beginning of the end of the standard non-smart multimeter? Little flies! Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, the beginning of the end? No, no, you're just you're too apocalyptic. No, no, it's just one of these things. It's a natural progression of the technology, and you know, we'll see all sorts of interesting things. So enjoy, relax, and hey, thanks for having me. I gotta get these damn flies! Wow, thanks, Dr. Meister, Meister, Meister. <laughs> You know what your name is. Thanks for joining us, and I hope we see you again in the future, maybe. Oh. Quick DC voltage showdown with the Klein MF600, one of the most accurate multimeters I've come across in a long time. Sitting at 1.50 volts right now, DC 1.502, 1.505. Okay, taking it up. Here we go. 4.8. 
one volt, according to the DC power supply, 4.81 for the client, 4.82 for Mr. Infrarider. Up and away, we're gonna settle on 16.36 volts. 16.37 for the client, 16.39 for Infrarider. Finally, let's max it out at a whopping 23.8. Finally, we're maxed out at 23.88 volts, 23.89 for the client, 23.91 for the Infrarider. So Klein won this, but it was a darn good showing by Mr. Infrarider. Good job. Quick look at DC current, sitting at 1.1 amps right now. 1.1 amps for Mr. Infrarider. Gonna max it now. 10 amps, and look at that nice high current alarm on the infrarider. Good job. Bring it back down under 10 amps and 9.7, 9.7. So, wow, this is one accurate little multimeter. Good stuff with a high current alarm. Loving it. Quick look at capacitance now, here we go. Remember this only has a four millifarad or 4,000 microfarad uh, rating, probably one of the weak spots on the meter, uh, but at least it does have some capacitance. So here we go, so this is a 560 microfarad cap. And 518 microfarad, so a little bit slow. Now just for the heck of it, here's a 10,000 microfarad, 10 millifarad. Don't think it's gonna work, haven't tried it, but let's find out. It is thinking, and we got an OL, so no can do over that 4,000 microfarad range. Uh, a couple of smaller ranges here. This is a 3.3 .3 microfarad cap. Coming up as 3.2 microfarad and a 100 milli, 100 microfarad rather, 101.6. There you go. Quick look at millivolts here, 100 millivolts right now. Coming in is 116. Let's take it up to 300 millivolts. Coming in is 316, 400, 418, 500. Let's take it up to 800 millivolts. And finally one volt even. So yeah, not 100%, but hey, not bad. So I've got to say, without a doubt, I am uber impressed for the price, the performance, and just the sheer quality of this little cheapo multimeter. So far, this sucker rocks. Let's take a look in the inside. Oh, and don't disappoint me. Easy access to that battery housing, one Phillips screw, brass threaded insert, and voila, instant access to the nine volt battery. All right, teardown time, here we go. Starting off with that uh, reverse side and no shielding. Well, no surprise, once again, uh, we don't have these little holes here for that speaker. Boy, that is a loud speaker, isn't it? Here we are on the inside. Oh, beauty, you know, better than I was expecting. Now, it does not have a, a fuse on that high current circuit, but it tells us that, that on the front of the meter, it does say unfused, but we do have at least a very nice, big, bulky uh, current shunt. So they didn't skimp out and just give us one of those cheesy little current sensing resistors. Now we have a nice big current shunt, that is a bonus. And look at that, we even have a PTC, that is for the voltage side. A couple of 500 milliamp fuse, glass fuse, but nonetheless 500, so slightly over that 400 milliamp rating, a good job. And wow, I gotta say, I'm impressed with those jack inputs. Look at the soldering done, very nice. That is very clean. Uh, no flux, no nothing, but in those blobs are in there good. Split variety, of course, but uh, yeah, good attention to detail. Move it up the board, not much going on here. Fab date, August 13th, 2021. And we have a crystal oscillator. I'm assuming then that the main IC is gonna be on the opposite side of the PCB. Boy, NCV would have made this the complete package, I'm telling you. Whoa, that would have been something. Uh, programmable headers over here for factory calibration. Uh, that's about it for this side. There's, of course, our nine volt battery housing uh, connector just sticking out. Let's take a look on the other side. Here we go. Underneath that PCB, there's the soft touch buttons and the zebra strip for that backlit LCD display. And there we are with the rotary selector tracks themselves. Tiny little bit of grease on them as well. So that's really nice to see. There is the other side of those input jacks. Once again, really nice soldering there. Look at that, good sized soldering blobs. No cold joints whatsoever. All in all, 
Very nice. That's the uh, HFE or the transistor slot over there hanging on. But uh, good stuff. Main IC right here, cobbed as you can see. A little unusual that it's on this side of the PCB, um, but all in all, looking good. Hey, not too shabby. Okay, gonna put everything back together. Come back with my closing thoughts. Closing thoughts in for Rider YF36K. Oh yeah, this is a cheapo with uh, panache. Yeah, this meter does everything really, really well. I mean, what can I say? It's a cheapo for 20 bucks. You're getting a little workhorse. One of the best continuities I have seen in a long time. Don't even get me started on these amazing test leads, gold tipped needle point. Oh my God. Hey, you can spend 20 bucks on that alone. Let them all, let alone worrying about the meter. A huge set of ranges, uh, dual temperature, microamps, milliamps, high current, even has that high current alarm. Oh my God. Few things, yes, the display is okay. It's a little bit on the small side. It is crisp, contrasty, but uh, well, you know, I've seen better. But hot diggity dang, I am nitpicking. At the end of the day, it's really hard to go wrong for so little money when you get so much. The Infrarider YF36K Cheapo Multimeter Extraordinaire gets a solid 4.5 out of five stars. Yeah, this was one kick arse meter. Hey, thanks for watching this review, everybody. To the next one, keep on testing.